I would say my left because my left is weaker. It's just weaker on that side? Yeah, my left is just weaker. I'm sorry, I, so right. you saw I did that and I went left. I'm like, what? That's not her left. That's her right. <laughs> <laughs> so your left side, did it hurt more on this side? I would say yes. Okay. So as I move you around, if anything's uncomfortable, let me know. Okay. Also at the other extreme, if I do something and you're like, oh, please, that, let me know. Okay. Because I'm, I'm using movement to try to figure out where there might be a movement restriction because I'm a soft tissue guy. That pulse get all up in that. Okay, this, area. yeah, this is going to need some, some work here. How's this in here? It's a little, a little tender. A little tender. Okay. And not uncomfortable when I mobilize, mobilize you? No. Nope. That way? Sorry. How's that? Fine. Good. How's this back here? It's not bad. Not bad? I feel pretty, actually pretty, not too bad today from the work yesterday. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. And all of this is, you know, tense but tolerable? Yes, sir. Okay. I always feel weird when people call me sir too much. <laughs> <laughs> now, when I bring you up and across, how's this? That actually strained my right side. It's when, it's, when it's about like T6. What do you mean? It just feels like it's tight? It feels like that T6 area, maybe T8, T6 through T8. Feels like too much? No. No? What about through here? Does that ease it up a little bit? It does. Oh, I feel that in my lower. Yeah. And same thing. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. Yeah, that's tight. When you have tingling or anything like down, does it go down to your specific fingers? It goes to all of them. All of them, okay. Yes. Not just, the reason I'm asking that is I'm thinking, is it ulnar or radial nerve? They'll, they'll usually have like a, a split between like the fingers, um, which ones they, they feel it in. Oof, this. Good night, we'd be in there for a while. Yes, sir. Okay. <laughs> And again, same as the other side? Yeah, not too bad. Not too bad? I really think those moves yesterday helped really loosen that up. Because you should have What we did yesterday, was it like pulling the shoulder blade open? It was, and really getting into that neck. Not bad over here yet either? Not bad. Uh, yeah, it was more strenuous on my lower back yeah. than anything. But. Yeah. And then um, tightness-wise, I know you're a massage therapist. You uh, always feel tightness up in here. I work on that every night before I go to every bed. Night. How do you work on it? I literally just go back and forth and, pinch. and dig, pinch, okay. find trigger points, and kind of just hold. If I do that nightly, my, I can sleep all night. How many times do you wake up at night? Uh, if my arms are bad, it just depends, like two or three times if they're good. Um, Maybe just once a night. Do you feel like you get enough sleep? Um, I try to get a good eight hours of sleep, but I my body usually automatically wakes up after six hours. <clears throat> How's this right here? Not bad. So I've also had a therapist that's gotten in there really deep, and it's literally paralyzed and has lifted up this arm. Okay. That's not what we're working towards. That doesn't sound good. No, it was pretty scary. Okay. So that's not too much pressure? No, sir. Okay. Do you have any referred pain anywhere at all? That's going into my arm. Okay. And then it's more at the top of my forearm. Does that feel like what you get all the time? It's starting to. And then just this is just making it a little more intense? It is. Okay. Yeah, is I'm it, feeling that going down my middle and these two fingers. Is it making you nervous at all? No. Okay. Because if I'm if I do something that recreates the pain she has, making my eye twitch too. She has a tendency to go, whoa, 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 hold on, hold on, I don't want that, right? All right, I almost do in my head because I'm like, that's the issue, and I want it gone. How's this right here? That's not bad. Okay. Uh, so a little more posterior. I would say posterior, yes, okay, right, right, right in there. There we go. Let's go. So very quickly, man, it's gonna really vary, like. The way I'm working on her is related to the issue she's having. So if I worked on her and she was having an issue with her foot, it might be <laughs> completely different. I'm just sort of checking the nerve trunks that go down her arm underneath her scalenes. I thought this might be the issue to begin with, but I don't want to dive just straight into this. I want to do just a little bit of softening 
on her limbs just to see how she responds to that first and just maintain a little touch. Get her like used to working with me and how I operate. Is, is it more intense than when I was hired? Um, not really. Not really? Okay. And then you're still just having that referred pin down the arm? It kind of loosened up. Loosened up a little it's bit? It's starting to go when you start going down a little bit more though. Okay. So I was using my thumb. My thumb was getting tired, so I'm going to switch out to using two fingers here. A little bit lower. We think right there. Is it too much? No. There we go. Same referred pain down the arm then? It's actually going in the back of my arm now. Okay. Down into my elbow. Does like that, that feel more familiar or is that kind of a new sensation? Uh, it's kind of new. Okay. Does it feel useful? Uh, it feels weird going into my elbow down here. Yeah, it's life. A lot of it feels weird. Uh. <laughs> uh, humor. If you got chronic pain, people have a sense of humor. They have really dark senses of humor. Yeah. I listen to a lot of Bill Hicks and George Carlin. <laughs> um, I'm going to back off again. I'm going to switch out to my thumb. I want to go a little more posterior. How's this right here? That is really good. Okay. Now, when you say it's really good, does that feel like what's going on with your arm? It feels like you're getting on top of that. Yeah. You're starting to, yeah. It's yeah. So, so it's almost like we weren't at the epicenter. We weren't at like the X marks the spot. We were just around it. And what I'm trying to find is what, what's the most common, the most like right there, how's that? That's good, you can even probably push harder. Yeah, I'm not gonna press much harder because of my hands. But yeah, it's kind of hard to get in there. Her, her eyes are twitching. And my eyes twitching. Okay, does that normally happen or is it just because I'm pressing on something? I think it's just because you're pressing on something. Yeah, she's just having a nervous system response. So of all the spots I pressed on, that last one was the one that's the most that was, well, I don't know, that very first time, too, was pretty intense. Okay. Then I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to switch sides. I'm going to take a break for just a second and, and go to the other side just to see if she responds the same. Is this right here? It's not bad. Okay. A little more posterior? Uh, yes, sir. Okay, right there. I'd say that's a good starting point. Maybe a little higher. A little higher right there? Yes. Yeah, I'm starting to feel that going down my deltoid. Okay. And more in the front? Yes, sir. Okay. Because clients wouldn't know deltoid. They just say, you know, I feel it in my arm. And I'll ask them for feedback. Do you feel it in the front of your arm or your back of your arm? Like, I'm just trying to find a general location. Sometimes the reason why is because I'm looking for essentially what people would call trigger points, so like referred pain patterns. They'll feel it in very specific areas. For instance, if she says, I feel it right here in my shoulder joint. That's anterior scalene. If she says, I feel it right here in my arm, that's infraspinatus. Almost always. A yoga teacher came in, an older yoga teacher. She was in her late 60s. And she's like, I got this pain on my shoulder. And I'm like, where? And she's like, right here. And I was like, ooh, you ain't going to like it. Mm -mm. <laughs> I know. I know. Mm -mm. This is not going to be fun. I mean, you're going to feel better. But infraspinatus, when they have a bad problem with it, is not like a fun area to work on. <laughs> it's like just, you're laughing, CrossFitters. Uh, yeah, that's the only time I've ever wanted to tap out of a massage. Yeah. 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 <laughs> How's that right there? That's not too bad. Not too bad? A little higher or a little lower? I would say higher. A little higher? Okay. Is this side not as bad as the other? Um, I think this side's got it in a little, like a little deep tricky spot so this one's going to be more posterior and lower too okay so so i'm going to back off again my, my thumbs are just getting tired and i i let you in on like my thinking just because i want you to understand like how i'm working i don't have any problems using my fingers getting into the scalings using my thumbs it's like a perfect way to like go in and work on that and do a little bit more delicate work the scalings i mean she's more familiar with like tingling and stuff down her arms People who, who don't um, have like chronic ongoing issues, that's really weird to them. When they start feeling stuff running down their arms, they're freaking out. Like, I don't know what's going on. What is this? Like, You're messing with my nerves. Is this is safe, you know, right? Because they're not used to that. And I go, it's fine. If you have pain, I think it's going to help. I don't mind it being intense. I don't want it to be painful. If you had a choice of me working on your right or left pec, which would you choose? Right. Okay. She's more covered. 
I'm going to come over. Normally, I would be on a mat. Do, do, do. Actually, I'm going to keep this shoe. Well, no, let's see here. Let's do this. Yeah, you can do either side. I mean, they're both okay. equally bad, so whatever works for you. But you prefer this side? Mm, I don't know. <laughs> okay, so we'll do a little bit of this one. Maybe we'll switch over to the other. Okay. I'm going to see if I can come up. I can put one knee right here. I can put one knee. Let's see. Right. How's that right there? Good. There we go. Now, your arm will move a little bit. I'm not so worried about that. Is it too much pressure here? No. Okay. So wh where my knee is, is it, it's not too much pressure? No. Okay. Do you want a little more? Sure. Okay. Right there is okay? I'll slide. There we go. Now, I'm going to shear. Do you want a little pressure a little bit down? Yes. Okay. Now, do you want me to go a little more medial um, or a little more lateral? Say lateral. Lateral, right so there. Like like into you a little bit. Oh uh, yeah. Now, I'm not gonna apply any more pressure than that. Are you doing okay? Yes. I understand it's not normal for guys to kneel in your chest. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what happened. <laughs> so, do this for me. I just want you to slowly. You can feel where I'm pressing into your ribs right there. Yeah. I want you slowly and comfortably to just breathe, and breathe deeply. I almost want you to feel like your ribs are wrapping around my knee. And then as you exhale, you just let it sink down and in. Oh, that's deep. Okay. So is it too much? No. Okay. Is it triggering any of that tingling or numbness down the arm? No, I'd say if you maybe go down a little bit further. Okay. Now if I go down, if I shear, is that what you mean by down, shear that direction? Yes, sir. Maybe more. A little more lateral? Lateral. Okay. Totally fine. And you notice that I, I work with her, especially because she's got a chronic ongoing issue. I'm going to work with her to communicate about what she's feeling while she's got it. I tend to communicate more, more verbally than therapists are familiar with because I'm not just a service provider doling out a massage. I'm actually trying to help her with something and I need to be able to communicate with her more succinctly. Uh, too much pressure in any way? No, it's fine. Cool, right there. Can you give me some breath right there? Has the tingling, the numbness down your arm <coughs> increased at all? No. Okay. And if I give you some more shear down or lateral, do you have any preference at all? Uh, no, you're in a good spot. Just a good spot right there? Yes. There we go. Give me one. There we go. Uh, so do this. Next time you breathe, breathe in through your nose, out through the mouth. Ah. So, very slowly, I'm going to start to lean onto my left knee, especially as she's taking an in-breath. I'm going to slowly, like, back out so her, her ribs can sort of expand. My, arm, my hands are tingling out. <sighs> so, there's enough pressure there that it will... Um, uh, well, you'd have to go deeper into the anatomy, but usually what I think it is, is like my knee is like an elbow on steroids, remember? The knee is a big, huge structure. It seems totally weird to like put your knee in somebody's chest. I do this constantly. My clients freak out. How, how big is my elbow compared to pec minor? How big is my knee compared to pec minor? When you use a bigger, larger structure, what I find, it, or what seems to happen, I don't have the science for this, their body seems to go, initially they go, oh, wait, hold on, you're not supposed to kneel in my chest. This is not, right? Because culturally, we don't have any context for that. Once they settle in, they go, oh, wow. But like, that's intense, there's a sensation, but it's not painful. And it's less painful than this because it's not sharp. Right? It, I have to develop enough core strength and balance to be able to do that. And then once my knee is here, then I'm actually using my hip muscles to shear different directions. I have to learn how to feel with my legs and feet. How does that feel right now? It's still tingling. 
it's a little bit. Got a little bit. Of is it like? Is it worse? So to speak. No, it feels a lot better. It feels better. Good. So the thing is, if it made it worse, I would be a little more apprehensive. Like I don't know if that's the right way to go. Go ahead. Yeah. No, oh, that's a good question. <laughs> so if if we're right in here, we're right over the brachial plexus, right? If we're if we're lengthening pec minor, when I say lengthening, what I mean is like we're pulling on one end. It's like pulling it taut potentially. What structures are we potentially pressing on? I'm thinking nerves and cardiovascular supply. What are we pressing on? Say it again? Well, I'm thinking generally like brachial plexus. There's potential for innervation. Some people's arms will go to sleep because I think when I press on this, it's going to clamp down a little bit potentially on cardiovascular supply. The more people relax from bigger, longer held, deeper, broader compressions, you start to affect cardiovascular supply to the point where people's limbs will go to sleep. I see it all the time in practice because I'm using suspension and standing on people. I add a lot of weight, right? For people, I have to coach them through this because they're not familiar with it. But in her case, I'm, I'm, co I'm like, hey, do you feel tingling? When I do that, she goes, oh, it's normal? Like, it's okay? I'm like, yeah, it might increase a little bit. Or it might feel buzzing down your arm. I just want to make sure she's not in pain. It's a sensation. It might be intense, but it's not painful. I think that the pet minor in particular lets go much more easily by doing that than what she showed, which was working on herself and, like, grabbing this and tugging on it, grabbing on it, tugging on it. I would probably, in a full session, work on the other side of the pec, uh, take her out of all that compression, put her on her side, try to open up her chest, try to open the shoulder blades back and open, continue to work on the arms. And I think that'll lead to the next piece, which is how much, uh, how many of you yesterday said you have problems with your arms and hands? Yeah. 